arms that will raise and a voice that can talk hands that can touch and legs that can walk ears that can listen eyes that can see i've got to praise him as long as i breathe i have been blessed a father and mother who nurtured and raised sisters and brothers and memories made our pastor to lead us this altar to pray stripes that can heal and the blood that still saves i have been blessed i have been blessed god so good to me precious are his thoughts of you on earth where the flag stands for freedom and what it is worth she stands in a harbor miss liberty calls all have given some but some gave it all so we could be blessed he's my shoulder to lean on when i am where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed the place where he hides me under his wings he's not just a song he's the reason I sing I have been blessed I have been blessed God's so good to me precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good. So good. I have been blessed. God has been Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. I just got one more. I got on my heart, so I want to do this. This is acapella, you guys. If y'all know it, sing it with me. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah and Paul preached that all is lost save knowing Christ little John said he is precious by leaning on his bosom so for a moment May I humbly testify Did I mention that I love him How I worship and adore him When I can't see no way He makes a way Did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he ever made me. I love him. That's all I want to say. And 
How many sermons can be preached about my Jesus? How many songs can be sung about God's Son? There are not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all my Savior has done. Did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him. When I can't see no way, He makes a way. Did I mention He's been faithful? To every promise he ever made me, I love him, that's all I want to say. I love him, that's all I want to say. Amen. Thank you, Lord. With different ones coming down to pray tonight, I've been reminded of the words of the Lord Jesus in John 17. He said, Father, I come to Thee. I come to Thee. That's it's real prayers to come to God, to move in His direction. I think I'm going to follow Brother Tim's uh, emphasis, worship, this is my uh, 
this is my Mississippi song. This song's got two marks against it. It was written in Mississippi. Somebody said there wasn't anything good to come out of Mississippi but Highway 78. I don't know about that, but I have a lot of dear friends down there. And the second mark is I wrote it in a motel room. Uh, those of you who have had to stay much in motels know that gets old after a while. <clears throat> but I was worshiping, and this came out of my worship. I call it my song of love. impressed with all my words and my rhymes and you're not one concerned with the tune but the truth is it comes from this grateful heart of mine it's my song of love and praise, Lord, just to you. I love you. I praise you. And I come before you, Lord, with thanksgiving. I love you. I come before your presence with singing. Lord, I know that you're deserving of much more than I can bring, for you're worthy of all honor and praise but I come with this one song and unto you I sing it's my song of worship for your grace I love you I praise you and I come before you Lord with thanksgiving I love you I praise you Lord I come before your presence with singing come before your presence with singing. Yeah. <laughs> By singing my own songs, you don't know when I mess up and when I do. When I, do. I left out a couple of words there in that last verse. Couldn't quite hold it long enough. Well, I've enjoyed this time together again tonight. We're thankful and grateful for the Lord's mercies. They endure forever, the psalmist said. And the old writer John Flavel said concerning that little phrase, His mercy endureth forever. He said not only does he, is His mercies ever flowing, but sometimes they are overflowing. 
And I thank Him for the overflow of His goodness and mercy. It's been a joy to be back with you here uh, today at Freedom Fellowship. We're thankful, appreciative for the opportunity. And then uh, got a little rest over at Rick and Sharon's place out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and Brother Ray gave me some tomatoes, I tell you. Anybody wants to run home and get any other vegetables, I'll wait on you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a joy. It's been a joy. And uh, I always feel when I come here that my job is not just to give out, but I can come and take in. And I've done that again today. And let me thank you for whatever's given, whatever's shared. You've been very kind to me. And uh, pray for Kathy. She has to put up with this every week. You all just get it once every now and then. Uh, God willing, we'll be off a few days, and then we'll be traveling down to Chattahoochee, Florida. And Kathy will be speaking at a women's meeting on Friday night at uh, Calvary Baptist. And then I'll be preaching over the weekend at uh, a church in Bainbridge, Georgia, just across the line there, about 20 minutes. And then we come back into South Carolina and down around Greenwood, South Carolina on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. And then, God willing, the next Sunday through Wednesday, I'll be preaching in Anderson, South Carolina. That's driving distance. Amen. And I know God's in that. <laughs> you get to sleep in your own bed. That's a special blessing. Yeah. And uh, then I have a, a Sunday morning, a homecoming, and then I have a little gap there. We're praying if it be the Lord's will, He'd open up something. If not, we'll... We'll trust him anyhow. Amen. And then we're going out to St. Louis to see the Grand Youngins a few days. Coming back through Tennessee on Sunday. And then it'll be October. I tell you, this year has been the fastest year of my life. Yeah. But the Lord is good. All the year, isn't he? All the year. Amen. He is good. I want you to turn with me again to the text I preached from this morning. And I'd like to take another one of those three names for God here in the text. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. I'm particularly interested tonight in that phrase, the God of all comfort. Now, I've been meditating upon some of the New Testament names for God for some time. There are only two of God's names in the New Testament which bears the word all. You may remember Simon Peter referred to him as the God of all grace. Here... He is referred to as the God of all comfort. Now, again, I remind you, Paul begins, he ventures, he begins this emphasis on God's comfort and encouraging the church. He even uses this title, the God of all comfort. I love flowers. People have laughed at me for making statements like this, but mother had a green thumb. I don't have a green thumb. Kathy does. Well, I think I overwater them. She talks to them. Apparently it helps. 
But uh, I don't know if I have a, fa- a favorite or not. I, I have, again, forgive me now, you can laugh all you want to. But I have wanted to see some flowers so badly in the middle of the winter. I have gone to a flower shop and bought flowers and took them back and put them in the motel. Because I just love to see them. They brighten, they brighten the room, they brighten my day, and I enjoy them. I think most people pick the rose out of the flower garden of life, the rose. If I could pick a uh, flower out of the garden of scriptures, it would be this title. I love this title. The God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. There's something just comforting and soothing in the very words. What a name. Our God is not just a far off distant deity, but He's the God that comes right in the middle of our troubles and comforts our hearts. Now, I read where Alexander McLaren, the great Baptist preacher from England, along the same time as Spurgeon, maybe 70 miles away, he said that he uh, fed all of his meals or presented all of his meals to his church with a three-pronged fork, three points. Well, I have found if I usually give more than three points, I either choke or they do one. So I guess I'm using my three-pronged fork tonight. I want to say three things about this title. First of all, I want to mention that this title should be embraced when it comes to principles, Bible principles. We should not forget He's the God of all comfort. Secondly, because Paul is blessing God and praising God, I would mention it not only should be embraced when it comes to principles, but it should be employed when it comes to praise. And then lastly, because Paul goes on to talk about being able to comfort others, Because God has comforted him. I would mention this great name for God should also be expressed when it comes or exhibited when it comes to practice. So with those three prongs, let me give you a few thoughts that have warmed my heart uh, from this great title for God in the New Testament. First of all, I want to magnify how we should appreciate this great title. It should be embraced when it comes to principles. Now, I'm aware that most of the time we embrace other great themes about God. We, We embrace His sovereign rule. We embrace His faithfulness. I confess the fact that he never changes. He's immutable. That, that's a principle I love to hang on to. But here is another one. God is not only the God of sovereignty and the God of faithfulness and the God of immutability and the God of grace, the God of glory, But here we're reminded he's the God of all comfort. Now the idea in the word comfort, of course, has to do with encouragement or solace, one writer put it. God is the God of all solace, all encouragement, all exhortation. It's similar to to the word comforter. Yes. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit. And this word comfort is a breakdown of that same term. 
paraclesis or paraclesis, some would pronounce it. Thayer said about the God of all comfort title, he said it tells us he is the author and the bestower of all comfort. That's right. So I just want to brag on him a few minutes tonight as our God of all comfort. Uh, basically, the thought that has gripped my heart as I've meditated on it is God is bigger than all our troubles. They had troubles, Paul had troubles, and uh, he said there'll be more troubles, but he's the God of all comfort. Now, let's begin by magnifying two ways we often approach God. I think we embrace what I'm calling the controlling side of God instead of the comforting side. We, we'll back off and we'll say, well, God's in charge of everything. And that's true. But while there is a controlling side to God, He's in charge of it all. He's on the throne. Yes. Yet, there is the comforting side of God. That's right. Now, some of us, we think of our parents, and we think of kindness, we think of encouragement. My dad, however, was severe as steel. I, I, I think my dad thought he was the reincarnation of Napoleon. <laughs> Uh, he was forward march about everything. He wasn't a big man, but he talked pretty big. And even though I was bigger than him, I believed he was. <laughs> and uh, I think of the controlling side of a parent when I think of my dad. My mother, I think of a comforting side. Sometimes it's vice versa. But my mother would say to my dad when he was really enraged about something I had done or not done, she'd say to him, O.T., he's just a boy. You were a boy one time. Amen. And then daddy would say, but Ruby, everything I say goes in one ear and out the other. And she'd say, well, he'll learn. He'll learn. And... Uh, I say, beloved, there is a controlling side to God where He rules supreme and authoritatively. But oh, we must embrace this truth. He's the God of all comfort. Now, you don't have to agree with this. But I'm of the persuasion if all we see is the controlling side of God, somewhere down the road, we collapse under control. that control and that authority. We must see that God is working all things for our good. Yes, yes. He's out to help us. He's not out to hurt us. I said this the other week and been hesitant to say it ever since because my wife, she said I caught her unexpected. But I want to say God is not a meanie. We're the meanies. We're the ones who determine we're going to do what we want to do. That's right. But God is not out to hurt us. He's out to help us. Amen. He's the God of all comfort. And so there's a comforting side to God, not just a controlling side. Let me come at it from one other angle. There's a comforting side to God not just a commanding sign. Yeah, come now, somehow as a boy, I got the idea, and there wasn't anything wrong with the way they preached, but when I heard preachers, I felt like God was over me with a big rod of iron. Yes, sir. And if I did anything or thought anything or budged any way that wasn't the right way, he's getting ready to come down on me. Yeah. And if he did, he would do right because he's righteous. Yeah. He's holy. However, I have found that God does not bless me because of me. No. He blesses me in spite of me. Yes. 
Yes, He commands us, be ye holy. He commands us to be obedient. He commands our honor yes. and our love. And yet, He's comforting about it. He draws it out of us. He doesn't just beat it out of us. We love Him because He first loved us. Yes. <laughs> I say then, this title should be embraced when it comes to principles. Dad, hang on to this title because the day will come when you're hurting and nobody will understand but God. And you'll remember He's the God of all comfort. Oh, yeah. Mother, hang on, embrace this great truth because the day will come when that phone call will knock you off your feet. But God will pick you up because He's the God of all comfort. I would underline a second truth tonight. This, is, this title not only should be embraced when it comes to principles. Make sure you hold on to this. Well, I may be going through dark places now. The waters may be rough now. But I'm going to enter into life and the, and the waters are going to be, the billows of the deep are going to lie down. He's the God of all comfort. Amen. Secondly, this title should be employed when it comes to praise. He's the God of all comfort. So we should praise Him. Blessed Amen. be God, the God of all comfort. And I'll, let me say this, please don't take it wrong. I got enough folks in that line without any of y'all getting in it. I believe we ought to pray. And I believe that, that we ought to sing. And I believe we ought to preach. And I believe we ought to worship. But I've been in some services where I was prayed out. Seemed like, uh, well, all right, we've had seven seasons of prayer now. Let's have an eighth one. And I believe in prayer. Don't misunderstand me. And Jesus said, My Father's house shall be called a house of prayer. But on some occasions when we come for worship, there should be more than external petition. Yes, brother. Then I've been in some services where it took me so long to wind down, I was pretty sure we had too much preaching. I could have probably said what I was going to say Finish it up 15 minutes before I did. You uh, take, for instance, an old preacher that had a lot of influence on my life, Brother William Huntley, better known as Brother Buck Huntley. Brother Buck Huntley said to me, Brother Hayes, he said, you can tell when a man's not got the message working in him. When he keeps saying during his sermon, as I was saying a while ago, as I was saying a while ago, Said he seemed like he never gets away from what he said a while ago. <laughs> and he can't move on farther. I think I've been in services where we had maybe too much public prayer. And I've been in services where we may have had too much preaching. And I believe I've been in some where some were determined that we had to worship where the God of worship was near or not. Right. And we sang so many worship songs and was given so many worship thoughts that I was wore out. I just want to well, go, somebody go ahead and preach. Somebody say something out of the word before we leave here. And uh, again, don't misunderstand. Please don't misunderstand. I want to worship God. It's my chief desire. I believe it's my chief purpose in this world yeah. is to worship and to glorify God. Yeah. However, it's possible to worship, worship, That's instead right. of worshiping God. Come on. However, I do not remember any time in my day, any time in my life, any time in church, any time when I was meeting with a few friends for prayer. I do not remember any time when we had too much praise. That's right. Amen. Blessed. Be God, he said. The God of all comfort. 
Certainly praise should be God honoring, but it can't be God honoring without it being Christ centered. There's much to praise God for. He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the text says. Don't get away from Christ. Don't, don't move away from the Lord Jesus. Even if we sing about heaven, I want something said about the Christ in heaven. And the one who sits upon the throne, he, he's the centerpiece of heaven. John said he saw a lamb in the midst of the throne. He's also to be the centerpiece of worship here on earth. He himself said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. In the midst, in the middle of the throne, in the middle of the worship of his people. I say, beloved, our praise should honor the God of all comfort, and we do that by worshiping and praising Christ. May I add, not only that, but we are overwhelmed by his compassion. Notice the text says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. The word mercies here, as is often the case in the New Testament, is the same word for compassions. You remember Jeremiah said, Thy compassions, they fail not. And here, we're, we're prompted we're incited, we're encouraged to bless God, the Father of mercies, and bless God, the God of all comfort. Really, I can't praise the God of all comfort without going through Christ. And I can't praise the God of all comfort without looking at some of the compassionate features of God's kindness to us. We constantly are confronted with such compassions and so we should praise God <laughs> now I'm in church too much maybe and I hear too much but even most of our praise is we're praising God because Johnny's over his cold yeah, or we're praising God uh, because the flu bug didn't get us or something that has to do with the physical. Not that we don't need to pray for the physical. God have mercy. We need His help in every realm. But I'm saying, beloved, if we're not careful, we'll get our eyes off of His mercies in spiritual matters and get to looking at His mercies only in physical matters. This name should be embraced when it comes to principles. Hang on to this. Hang on to this. And it should be employed when it comes to praise. When you're praising God, don't forget to say, We praise Thee, Lord, that Thou art the God of all comfort. Amen. Yes, there's much to praise Him for. But oh, where would we be if God did not console us? If God did not comfort us? If God did not encourage us? Right. Now, let's come to the thing that Paul is moving into. Yes, he's the God of all comfort. And he adds in verse 4, Who comforteth us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God gives us comfort, then we're able to comfort others with the comfort that God has flowed or, or brought into our lives. In fact, notice, if you will, again in verse 5 and 6, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings 
which ye, we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Paul said, if I see God comfort you through me, it comforts me again. And if you see God comfort me through you, it'll comfort you again. Ah, this cycle of comfort, it should, this name, the God of all comfort, should be expressed when it comes to our practice. Now, our practice would involve ourselves. Come on. Now, I want to thank Him for what He's doing for you. But I want to bless God for comforting me. Oh, yeah. And coming to my aid, as the Word indicates, you know, the, the name for comforter, one called alongside of. I want to thank Him for coming alongside to help me and to comfort me. He's the God of all comfort. And it helps us ourselves. God uses one to help another. Paul said, God's helped me and I'm helping you. And then I would use that word. Not only does God minister to us, we ourselves, but He uses us to minister to others. Others. Now, I'd just like to give a very simple word here of exhortation. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm feeling so low. I'm down and out. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, Mama, let me encourage you. They say you make a good chocolate pie. Why don't you make it and take it over yonder to that shut in? What it is is God is blessing you, and in turn, you are blessing to somebody else. Ah, God is the God of all comfort, and He comforts us and enables us to be a comfort to others. Others! (laughs) You take, uh, I may have mentioned this before, you take a piano. This is an electronic keyboard, but I used to tune a lot of the older pianos. You know, some churches I've been in, they didn't want you to play a guitar uh, in certain parts of the country. They say, well, that's... That's, that's got strings on it. Well, Lord, a piano, how many strings does it have on it? Yeah. Two for every note. And, uh, and especially after you get away from the bass notes. And uh, I have learned several great lessons tuning pianos. One, some of you use this. You feel like God's stretching you too far sometimes. To get a note... To get a string just right, you got to take it a little tighter than it ought to be and then let it relax and come back to, to the, the real point there of expressing itself. And God somehow has to take us a little further so we can come back and sound just right in, uh, in His divine purposes. I learned... That if you tune two pianos in the same room, that piano number one, you can play one note on piano number one, let's say a G note, and somebody standing at piano number two, though you're not striking a G note, the vibrations from the string on piano number one will cause the string on piano number two to vibrate. Yeah. And piano number one is a blessing to piano number two. I've been to church and I've had the other, just a call in the day or just a moment of fellowship. And I, it just didn't seem like God was playing any of the notes in my heart. But I got around somebody that God was striking a note or two. And when God was striking a note in them, it seemed like it'd go to vibrating in me. God to do something in me. I'm talking about not only getting comfort ourselves, but comfort for others. For others. Somebody says, well, I thought about calling them. Well, do it. I thought about sending them a little note. Do it. Comfort them. Encourage them. <laughs> You know the message of the book of Ephesians is that we're seated together in heavenly places. The two of us who are close friends had a mutual acquaintance who was very discouraged, almost at the point of depression. 
And my buddy called me. He said, Brother Tom, what do you think about this? He said, I'm going to send him a card and try to encourage him. I said, that's great, brother. That's, I think you ought to do it. I said, what's your card say? He said, well, I made it myself. And he said on the outside, when he gets the card, it's going to say, keep looking down. I said, down? He said, yeah, but when he opens, it's going to say, for you're seated together in heavenly places with Christ. Ah, brother, I want to say God can use you to encourage me. He can use me to encourage you. And as I preach from place to place, as God grants me places of utterance, I'm seeing like never before the need of encouragement. Really, I don't know if everybody needs to hear me. I may just need to hear them and let them talk out their heart around me. Are you listening? I'm talking about ministering to others, helping others, comforting others with the comfort wherewith God has comforted us. <laughs> I looked for an illustration of this and couldn't seem to find anything that I wanted other than that piano idea. And then I read Phillips Brooks' comments on this title, The God of All Comfort. Phillips Brooks wrote, The sunlight falls upon a clod, but it lies black as ever. The sun doesn't change that old black clod. But the same sunlight touches a diamond and the diamond sends out and radiance on every side. The very light that has fallen on it shines out in other places. I just want to get this clear. I want you to catch what I'm saying. I don't want to be a clod. I'd like to be a diamond for God. I got to tell you this: the church where I just preached, one of the fellows was a big cut up, and uh, I heard him talking about it. And I don't know if he thought I showed interest or not, but uh, he makes he makes uh, he gives away diamonds and uh, diamond pins, and they wanted to give me the one to take home to Kathy. Well, he's such a big cut up, they called me up in front of the church after I preached that last service Friday night. And they handed me a little white box. I was afraid to open it because I didn't know what he had done. They said, Brother Ronnie, we want you to have a gift to take home to your wife. We want you to open it here in front of everybody. And it was a dime and pen. You getting how I'm saying it? Dime and pen. <laughs> Had a dime with a safety pin welded on it, or glued on it, a dime and pin. Well, I don't want to just be a dime and pin. I'd like to be a real diamond for God, would you? I don't want to be an old clod. No, it just takes in God's blessings and never changes. I'd like to give a radiating testimony of the brightness of God's comfort in my life. That's what I had on my heart tonight. You've been awful kind to receive it. Would you stand with me? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Our Father, we don't know really how to close the service. But if somebody could embrace this great title, the God of all comfort, when it comes to principles, I, I just know that it could help them down the road. And then, Lord, I don't know, somebody may need to just take this title and employ it in their praise. We don't want to leave it out, Lord. We feel like it would leave us somewhat desolate 
Oh, how hopeless we would be if you were only the God of holiness. We thank thee that thou art the God of all comfort. Then, Lord, we pray that all of us might exhibit this great title when it comes to our practice. Teach us to comfort others, Lord. Teach us to exhort others. Teach us to encourage others. Teach us to help one another. Lord, may you shine your graces through the diamond of our lives. And may it radiate other lives. I pray that you'd play your notes in our hearts. That it might sound out in somebody else's heart. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Glorify thy name. And we'll be grateful for all that thou wast do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother, you got a song on your heart, or maybe a little chorus on your heart. You pick it out for us. If I'm not careful, I'll try to take over the whole service. I want you to exercise your gift. Give us a give us a number. Let's stand and sing together as he sings. Yes, have thine own way, Lord. Yeah, let's sing it with him. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Sing it now. My being absolute spirit. Fill with thy spirit, Lord. Fill with thy spirit. Till all shall see. Till all can see. Christ only. kindness and comfort working in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, you come <coughs> and close the service. Bless God you. bless your heart. Appreciate bless you and love you. Everybody say amen. amen. All right, we appreciate Brother Tom. What a great amen. encouragement it's been to me tonight. Yes. And so we praise the Lord for it. I hope you got some help tonight too. I'm glad that we've got a, a God that will help us. David said, I lift thine eyes on the hills, which come of my help, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. So I praise the Lord for that wondrous helping hand of God. I praise him. Come back uh, Wednesday night. We'll be back in Psalms 23, verse number 5. And we're headed down to the end of the six chapters of the book, I call it. And so uh, it's been a wonderful uh, series of sermons there on Psalms 23. And so uh, we, we love uh, that uh, precious book. So glad to have you tonight. Oh, Lord, it cost you. <laughs> uh, Lord, that'd be like uh, the teacher asking uh, the, the first grader for notes. <laughs> uh, Brother Tom's been my mentor for uh, longer than I can probably even... Uh, I think uh, I, I, he was my mentor before he knew I was <laughs> his student. <laughs> I'd been following him for a long time. What a blessing he's been to me. He's taught me a lot through through the years, and I appreciate him and uh, his travels. We could be much uh, much in prayer for him traveling all over the world. Him and Kathy, and and uh, what a great blessing. He's supposed to have brought me some. Um, some notes on the eagles, but uh, 
the notes that I have, they're a little far-fetched, and I don't want to feed you some. It's far-fetched. And, but uh, I appreciate Tom. Uh, you, got to, you don't have any of your stuff with you, do you? Okay. Got any books? I do have a few. Uh, some of the folks bought books this week, but I have a few. Some of my books. Okay. Tom is also an author, an author, and uh, one of the great uh, commentaries on the Book of Exodus and First Second Thessalonians that you'll ever read. So I encourage you to buy those if he's got any of them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Brother Al, will you lead us in prayer? We'll close.